Welcome folks, Jason here to explain what a graphic style is in Adobe Illustrator. And what you'll need for this is you'll need some shapes. So you can create some shapes with a fill in the stroke. You also need your graphic styles panel and your appearance panel, which are going to be under the window menu. There's the appearance panel, there's the graphic styles. Now, a graphic style is basically just a series of shapes. A graphic style is just a series of fills or strokes that are saved in the graphic styles panel. So, if I create a shape and I've decided to put a fill and a stroke on this, as well as a stroke weight, I can take this and I can drag the object right into my graphic styles panel and it will drop it right in right there. So there's my graphic style. Now graphic styles don't record the shape, which means I can go in and I can draw anything that I want to and apply a graphic style to it. So if I go and click on any of these other styles that I've created in here, you'll see <clears throat> that whatever attributes are in that graphic style then get applied to my shape. So it won't just keep doing circles every single time. It'll take whatever you've done and apply that particular style to it. If I go in and I draw a line and I apply a graphic style to the line, you're going to see that it's going to apply the stroke of whatever is saved in that graphic style to just the stroke. Since I don't have a fill on this, it's not going and it's taking the fill and putting it on my object. So what's the benefit of this? Well, the benefit of this is that I don't have to remember what I've done in my graphic style. So every time I create a shape, I know it's going to have the same fill and stroke as all the other things that I've done. Now, if you do want to know what's going on inside of a graphic style, specifically one that's a little bit more complex, that's what the appearance panel is for. So I have this shape that has this kind of soft gradient effect applied to it. And you can see that it has no stroke, but it's got a couple different fills. And it's got a feather on this one fill, and you can turn on and turn off each and every one of these objects to see what's going on. This particular one's a little bit more complex because we have two fills. Yes, you can do multiple fills, multiple strokes. This one has a fill that is larger because it's got an offset path to it, which allows it to make it look like it's larger, still being one shape. This one is actually a 3D effect. You can see here lots going on. They use the extrude and bevel and the warp. If you want to edit any of these or see how these were done, you can just double click on anything with a link inside the appearance panel and you can call up exactly what was done by double clicking and then you can see how these items were made. This can be a fill or a stroke. In this case, it's a stroke that's got an orange um, stroke weight to it stroke color to it, and then it's got a feather appearance to it as well, which is a brush stroke to give us that particular quality. Kind of cool. So once you put your graphic styles in there, no matter what you go in and create, it's wonderful. You just click on that graphic style and you're done. You don't even have to worry about what's going on. Now what happens if you want to go in and you want to change all of these attributes on a particular graphic style? Well, you can do this pretty easily because kind of cool. So I look at this and I'm not liking this color combination on this orange and blue that I've created here, okay? But I've had a style applied to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the color of the fill to be kind of a darker orange. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to change all of these other ones to match this updated style. So what I have to do is I have to update this style here. But if I double click on it, it only gives me a name change option. That's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my object that I've created. I'm going to begin dragging it. And then I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key and drop it on top of my graphic style. And when I do that, that's going to change the graphic style. And it will change every place that that appears in my entire document. Well, that's kind of cool. But what happens if I don't want to do that to each and every object? Say I'd like to have this object stay just the way it is because I've done some manipulation to it and I like this color combination. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the broken chain which breaks the link to the graphic style 
or you can go into the drop down menu and choose break link to graphic style. It's grayed out because I just hit that broken link. Now, if I were to go in and I were to change the color of this and I were to click and drag, and then once I'm dragging, hold down my Option or Alt key and drop it on top of the new graphic style, you'll see that this object, that the link was broken to its style, no longer gets affected by that particular style. So it's kind of cool. You can do that. If you like this style, but you would like to go ahead and say, create a slightly different version, like with a different border or a different stroke or a different stroke weight, you can always take this graphic style, click on it, select it, duplicate that graphic style, then take one of your objects here, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to basically set the stroke weight much higher, like so, and then I'm going to drag this over, hold down my Option key, and drag it on there. So now I have two different graphic styles. It's just an easier way to recreate that. Now graphic styles can be very simple, like a fill and a stroke, but you can also get much more complex styles. Now we don't have a lot of styles in here, but we do have a styles library. And here you can go in and you can really begin to see what type of styles that you can create and what's there just by going in and saying, hey, let's take a look at a neon effect. You'll get a floating panel of all the different neon effects that you can have. I'm gonna select an object. I'm going to apply one of these neon effects and I get that neon effect. And if you'd like to see how this was done, go into your appearance panel and you can walk through each and everything that was done and you can edit it or turn on and turn off the visibility of that particular item to see what's happening here. Also have really cool 3D effects. Okay, so how do you go ahead and create something like this? Let me go in and do that. It's like, whoa, that's crazy. Sure. Well, there's a fill, there's a stroke, and then you can mess with the 3D bevel extrude and see how these objects are done. Remember, there's lots of things in the library here. Anything, buttons and rollovers, and so on. You can get all this absolutely cool, fantastic stuff. It's like, wow, how do they do that? Yeah, it's all done in Illustrator. Okay, so if you like something like this, take some time to go through the appearance panel, find out what they've done in order to make that happen. And anytime that you apply an appearance or style from one of your graphic styles, it's going to go ahead and show up in the graphic styles library because this is all part of the library. So the second you apply it, it puts it in there. Now, going through and working with the appearance panel, this may seem a bit confusing, but I want to show you something very simple about just a basic object and how you can work with the appearance panel to get multiple objects appearing on an object without creating multiple objects. And here, what I want to show you is how we can put in multiple strokes and multiple fills. When I have an object, I have a stroke and a fill. If I wanted a larger circle that's a different color behind it, most people would say, oh, you just draw another circle and you put it behind. Well, that wouldn't work with a graphic style because I would want multiple colors, multiple fills on one style so that I don't have to draw multiple shapes. So down at the bottom here, I have an add new stroke and an add new fill. I'm going to click on the add new stroke and it's going to add a stroke here. This is on top, so this stroke will appear on top of this other stroke. I'm going to make this stroke red, but I'm also going to make it half the width. And you can see that that adds a stroke to my object on top of the orange stroke. You can see that if I put a stroke here, I can have a red stroke on top of the orange stroke. If I would like to do another stroke here, I have to make sure I put it in order. So here I put another stroke. I'm going to make this yellow, but again, I need to make this smaller because I don't want it to hide this red stroke here. And if this stroke is a greater weight than this one, it's going to hide it. So I'm stacking all of this content. So now I can have a shape, which is really cool with multiple strokes, or in this case, with multiple fills, haven't done that yet, but let me show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a, mul a fill here. Now, unfortunately, if I put a fill on the top, it's going to cover all of my strokes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down so that the fill is behind the strokes or underneath. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the fill. 
However, when I change the color of the fill here, it's going to look very odd because it's going to block out this green right here. So a thing that I could do is I could make this shape smaller, make this fill smaller, not really changing the shape, but just make the appearance of the fill smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my effect and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to make this smaller by going in and creating using the distort and transform. So I'm going to scale this fill down so it's going to be 75% of the size of the original fill. You're thinking, okay, are we sizing the object? No, not really. We're just sizing down the size of the fill. I know it's weird, okay? So here, what I'm telling this is I'm saying, take this fill and make it 75% of the size of the original fill. And you see when I do that, and I make that smaller, and I click OK, I now have a fill that is transformed here. And you can double click to edit the size of this. And then I have the green fill that is behind it. Now, if I like this, of course, I can take this object, drag it into the graphic styles panel, and keep it right there. Now, if I select a shape, I simply click on that graphic style, and I get that style. Check out my other video on the appearance panel here, because I go more into depth on what you can do there. But graphic styles are definitely a cool thing if you get into more complex artwork, and you want to make sure you capture all of the attributes without having to remember each and every step.